Hello and welcome back to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And um, if you are enjoying this content, art journaling, mixed media art, affirmation art journaling, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Um, and this week's video since it's a new year, January, um, I've been looking back and thinking of a new way uh, with these nice neutral, uh, sort of like a print paper, a cardstock. And um, I think I did a series of three, I think it was red and yellow. It was a long time ago. It was one of my first videos. And I wanted to use the same format, but also to explore a different type of feeling um, um, of line, atmosphere, layers, um, before I, um, I just don't feel ready right now, or I don't feel I've explored enough this uh, concept or feeling uh, before I hit the canvases. So I'm gonna try a few of these, some wood panel, and see how it goes. Um, right now, you're probably wondering, oh, there I am. I went, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I usually get, and I do get everything ready, but I couldn't find my small container of gesso. Rather than trying to fit the great big bucket on my table here, which is a very nice, neat, organized art journaling uh, area. So I decided to use the titanium white, the heavy, uh, the heavy, the heavy bodied one. And it will be a little shinier because I'm going to even uh, add the heavy gloss medium to it to give it some body so I can start with some texture. I do believe I did a series of four and they were in quadrants with the same cardstock taped together at first to be one and then separate. Uh, you can do the same with a big piece of watercolor paper, um, any heavy stock paper. So just experimenting with some action and some energy. I was just so, it was just one of those days where I really needed to um, get rid um, let go of some energy here. So I gathered all my um, moving around tools, catalyst wedge, color shapers and scrapers. And right now I'm just observing and thinking uh, with my intention to be more of a atmospheric layers translucent and transparent layers to start with. I don't know if it'll keep going in that direction, um, but we will see. And I just want to play with those layers more, just to become more familiarized and see what they do so that when I do work larger on a canvas, I can maintain my intuitive process and react knowing that I know somewhat the results of combining things, so those that'll just process and come out without overthinking or any thinking, really. So I use my little uh, paint palette here, the metal one, and it's great for adding that, um, just a little bit more texture and um, lifting the paint. So you can, when you do this, depending on how thick your gesso is, your paint is, um, scraping tool, you can go back in, see what I'm doing, and just, oops, <laughs> and then just sort of bring it back down. But in hindsight, I will leave it next time and just go over it really lightly because I really like the cracks and crevices. So as you can see, I flipped really quickly. I dried it with my hair dryer so I could move along. Um, now I'm experimenting with drawing, drawing, just mark making. And 
right here where I do my recording, I'm looking up at my vase of mark making tools and, and yet have not used those, um, mostly because they're with ink and the ink will, if I put layers or use any wet paintbrush on top of them, it'll smudge and get all messy. So, but I will use some of them next time just to get that really uncontrolled uh, feeling. And, say, and saying that now, using the Posca markers, it's really controlled. Well, more controlled than the marks that are underneath. And you see, I'm just playing with marks, a layer of something, more marks, another layer coming up. So I thought I would use my color shaper already knowing previously what I did so it's in your it's in your schema it's in your memory and you need see I'm dipping it in the water there so it slides along and that's why I covered this with paint or would have preferred gesso and um, I'm gonna do another three and another three I'm gonna just keep going and I might not record all of them but I'll show you the results in the end. Let me know. <laughs> and I'm just going for a feeling here. Uh, lights, darks, and I, and I want to experiment too, starting a painting with black and white marks and then coming in with the color and then maybe collage and then maybe stenciling and then collage or stenciling collage and then some more stencils before I separate them or if they were one whole watercolor like some other um, um, wonderful art journaling artists out there um, use um, you know I can't think of her name she uses uh, she uses yellow and red and orange a lot with black bold colors and uh, uh, a real wonderful channel. I'll probably mention mention or remember her name. It's just one of those days. This is the most wonderful, wonderful golden product. Nickel Azo Gold. And I know it's wonderful in other other brands as well. It is so transparent. It goes from like a yellow to a deep orange, and it's so earthy. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's exactly what I visioned, envisioned. Um, being careful to make sure your layers are dry before you come in again on top with another layer. I can also envision some of that transparent white or the other neutral uh, coming in over top or stenciling in somehow. So we'll see. So what I'm doing, if you stay to the end of the video, is um, just the very first few layers. So it's just a part one. So I've act, I'm going to activate this and then separate them. And they are square. They're eight inches by eight inches. That's a nice standard if, if they do turn out. Um, I'll probably do another three with the same colors just so I can get maybe a set or so and then if they turn out I will put them in a mat and they will be offered for sale and if you're a subscriber you always find out these things first and this year uh, is where I have definitely found out and promised myself that I would keep up my consistent monthly newsletter and new work and letting subscribers know what's happening. And you will also get the dibs if you join my Facebook group. And there's gonna be just little, just tips. Uh, and that's where I'm at now and later on this year I will start um, just breaking down what I do into some more um, 
uh, tutorials or art journaling club or something like that. So that's uh, just starting in the works. So I decided to, and I, and I liked how I uh, brought the camera lens back a little bit. So there's more of a surface here on my art journaling table. So you can see the different types of transparent. Um, I find I really need lots of this stuff. I just love it. So you can use tissue paper, deli paper, tracing paper. Um, there's many different kinds. Uh, probably tissue paper is the most available. And there's artist tissue paper and regular tissue paper. And all these are offered on Amazon. So if you've been following some of my mixed media abstract videos, and that's a category on my channel, you'll see how I love the overlapping and of this paper where you can still see lines underneath. And when you use your medium to glue it on, I'm using a heavy, heavy gloss medium. You can just use a gloss medium. You don't need the heavy. Excuse me, it's been a long day. You don't need the heavy for this type of paper. Actually, it's probably better if you just use the regular gloss medium. It's a little more liquid. It'll probably soak in a bit more. So I should really try that. I just use, it's such a habit. I just use it and it's just ready to go. So right now, I'm trying to, uh, not trying, I'm actually overlapping the tissue paper in some parts because that's the whole point of putting these things together. I'm not treating them as separate paintings yet until I've put enough layers down on the very first phase. And in part two, I probably will be taping them back together because I forgot how wonderful the sten a stenciling stage would be to finish up this phase. Um, maybe black, maybe orange, probably an opaque color because it's a difference from what's already there. And so that smudged a little bit, tore a little bit. And I, I know why I had the, the, the brush, the metal part of the brush on an angle too close to the paper and it sort of tore it, but that's okay. You can't really see it. I'm gonna be, that's gonna be underneath many other layers anyway. And just trying to decide. So I was listening to some podcasts today and um, some artists go by a three second rule or a five second rule. If the piece of collage sits and looks really fantastic for three seconds or five seconds, then it, that's where it stays. And you're not allowed to sort of, you know, or you shouldn't, you know, all these little rules that everybody has. So um, it's really cool because it keeps the flow going. So in the comments for this week's video, I would love to hear what are some of your little rules that you have or guidelines um, for your art journaling practice or mixed media or whatever it is using all these, using collage, abstract collage. So I'm loving the gloss and I'm just putting it down first because this paper is, I don't know, I'm going to order a different bunch of deli paper. This stuff is so delicate, it's crazy. And if, and I really have to be careful if I choose to use it on my jelly plate printer so it doesn't tear. So I think tissue paper is better. It's got a little more strength and I've not used the artist tissue paper. If anyone has, uh, please leave a comment. Um, is there any particular brand? I'm in Canada, Ontario, Canada. So, but you know, Amazon, we can, we can get anything from anywhere. Wow. So things have changed. I remember the great big bulk power shop going to the art store. I used to go 
to Gortzman's on Spadina in Toronto. It was just heaven. I don't know if any of you have been to Gortzman's. I don't even know if it's still open. I think it is, but I know the original owner must be, must be long gone. He was a really interesting fellow. <clears throat> so this is, what is this stuff? Um, rice paper. Yes. And isn't it interesting? It's just transparent enough so you still can see. It just has that more of that cloudiness. So thinking about that, you know, and, and that's why we need to make a ton. And that's my job this month to make as many of these. And, and if you didn't catch my other video with the little six by sixes, they were in orange, black, white, turquoise, I believe. And I took those through a series. They're in my drawer. I think I made like, oh man, 12 of them or something. And then I think six or so are really, you know, hung in there. I still have them. I haven't offered them for sale yet or matted them because I'm still, they're small and I'm still trying to figure out a really cool way to frame them. Um, so anytime, just leave a comment, uh, go on my website. And I know my job this month is to finish putting up all of my latest work on my website uh, for sale, if anyone wants to check that out. Okay, here comes the big bright orange. So more line, but I'm thinking a different format for this color, different material would, would really be interesting. Not too much. Um, and I also want to put more black in this. Just how that'll go, I'm not sure. I'm not sure at this point. I don't want to think ahead. I don't want to think about the product at the end. I just, you know, it's best to just do that. And um, just a little advice, just make the art that you want to make if it wasn't for sale. What do you want to make? Make that art and you will attract. Um, because there's something about authenticity in that realm that people really, I think it really shows. It shows energetically, spiritually, um, you know, any, any, any form of creativity um, or, or authenticity. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, you can, t you, you just know, you just, there's a sixth sense that you just know and it's good. And uh, I always say, like my saying, you know, uh, an art practice that's good for the soul. It's like, this stuff is good for the soul because it helps us reach and go deeper into our inner selves. And uh, I guess that's the, the journey we're on here. Oh, got it dirty on the back. So I was thinking about the tape coming to the end. And I thought, oh, I remembered I overlapped some of the paper, so I better run through that with the X-Acto knife. So I almost, <laughs> almost forgot. So now that they're separate unto themselves, I may just go back and overlap a little bit of stenciling um, for part two in black and white before we head into the next phase. So... I'm, and I'm not going to gesso the back because if some of these turn out, I might mount them on a um, a wooden panel that's eight by eight, uh, a deep one, and they'll look really cool that way. So this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed part one of Mixed Media Abstract Start to Finish, and I will see you in the next video. And if you scroll down to the comments, you'll see the links to my Instagram, Facebook group, and my all-over print art product shop. So I'll see you next time.